Welcome to episode two of Speak About It. I am Black Emmanuel Speaks. Um, shit. <laughs> Speak About It. Welcome back, episode two of Speak About It. Again, myself, Emmanuel Speak. I really, really do hope that you enjoyed episode one and gave some really cool things from my conversation with Nathan Hector. Let us know, let us know what you're thinking, what your thoughts are, whether you're enjoying it using the hashtag speak about it. Episode two, we have a very special guest. Again, they all are a good friend of mine who is a filmmaker, um, interestingly enough for those of you at home. He also, the last short film, has won Best Short Film at London Independent Film Festival. And I am very, very honored to have her today. Very honoured to have worked with her on our own shoot from the composer. Check it out. So she's got some light that she needs to share for us. And when they get into it, this is Ella Bennett. So welcome, Ella. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Um, I know the voice is a bit. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Just try for us. I will try. try, for try. Us. try I'll for make us. sure. Try my best. So yeah, um, tell us a bit about you. Tell us a bit about your journey. Kind of how um, you've got to where you are today. Kind mm. of where you started from. Where your interest started in terms of film and and kind of um, what's how, essentially how you've got here today. Oh gosh. Well, I started at like fourteen. My okay. mum bought me a Toshiba camcorder mm. um, and then from there I sort of started filming random sketches with my cousin Okay. and <laughs> like random sketches and stuff, mm. like random scenarios and mm. um, then I broke it. So <laughs> I, had, I had to like, yeah, just had like, I took up a Saturday job at like 16 mm. at an estate agent, saved up mm. and then just bought 500, uh, a Canon 500D Okay. and then started self-shooting. Um, but like it kind of started from just writing, drawing. Like I was very artistic at yeah. a young age. Mm. But like I found it really fun to like go around and take photos and like talk about like talk about different stuff. Like work because I lived on an estate, yeah, so yeah. like Kingswood Estate in Gypsy Hill. So like I was very community led. So a lot yeah. of the things that I'd record would be like stuff around there. Yeah. And like when I was fifteen, I did a documentary on Suffolk Estates. Went around different parts of the South and <laughs> um, talked to different people and like it was almost like a research project. But like yeah. that when I watched other people watching that, um, which was like a, I did like a music video at the end. I was going to <laughs> writing lyrics, lyrics, <laughs> buttons, music. Like if you Everything. listen to it, you'd be like, "Is this Ella?" Everything. And like, I did the music for it at the end. Like it was like an outro to mm. the documentary. Yeah. And then after watching people's reaction to that, I was like, "Yeah, this is what I want to do." Yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of how I started. Okay, so then, like, moving on from that, um, how did you then kind of get your foot? Because obviously you've done quite, like, you've done some really cool stuff in terms of working with the BBC, BBC Comedy, mm -hmm. with Vice. Mm -hmm. um, you've also created your own short films. Mm -hmm. um, we've created a short film together. Yes. So, like, how did you then go from... Um, this um, 14, 15, 16 year old with a camera just in, yeah. in the estate and, and, and in around South to someone who's actually fully in the industry. What have you, have you had to study for it? Mm. Have you had to, what sort of connections did you have to make to kind of mm. um, get into the field? Um, well, my, my, my estate based documentary got me into sixth form at okay. the Brit School. Okay. So like nice. I showed them that mm. and I did like an interview and mm. they were like, yeah, come let's study. So I studied at the Brit School, okay, we'll um, which is like obviously everyone, not everyone knows about it, but it's a performing arts school. Yeah. But it also does art and design mm. um, and media. So it does stuff behind the scenes as well. So when I did that course for like two years, it was mm. like a creative, like a um, national extended diploma yeah. um, in media production. So it did photography, radio. Um, so it was like across different units. Mm. And then from there, I got like a distinction and then I did a like degree at Ravensbourne opposite the O2. Yeah. And it was like a fast track degree. So it was in two years. Mm. And from there, that's when I like started to work with other people. Obviously, every unit was different. It was a lot more focused than film, than photography or mm. radio or, yeah. stuff like that. or TV. It was a lot more focused on just film. Mm. So like after that, that's like basically one of the like lecturers in my year, the only female lecturer in my year. Mm she recommended me onto a mentor scheme. And then I did the interview. I was like, what? I thought she said me mentor someone, <laughs> but it was me to be mentored. Yeah. And I was like, okay, what's mentor? Like, yeah. I don't know. I just felt like mentorship was a bit alien to me because yeah. I just thought you do work experience and then that's it, you know? Mm. 
but she was like, yeah, I've entered you in for this opportunity. Yeah. And then I went for the interview thinking like cussing to myself, like this ain't even giving me a job, man. This ain't even money. <laughs> Why am I going to some interview to do yeah. some mentorship? Like, yeah, yeah. ain't even going to pay me no bills. Like, mm. But it just so happened to be that one of the panelists for this interview was head of production at BBC mm. Comedy, okay. who is now in LA um, and she's in Netflix. Like she works in Netflix um, for physical production. So um, she kind of was like, emailed me personally after the interview. I was like, you're amazing. Um, do you want to work at BBC Comedy for three months? Oh, wow. So that's kind of how it was cool. And it's like a blessing. It wasn't mm. like a, I had to fight for it by God's grace, even mm. though there's a lot of politics and adversity in terms of inclusion in the industry. Mm. My story is quite unique. Yeah. 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 So from from there, I was ended up being at BBC Comedy for seven months and I won the award for the mentorship scheme. So for a, a month, like an hour for every month, I'd be at Vice um, yeah. UK talking to a creative director mm. for an hour um, about my career choices and mm. it was just always telling me to do more training mm. alongside my work. Yeah. So not everyone can do that, but he was just like, if you if you do that, then that's what's going to get you in the doors. Mm. What what do you? It depends on your job. So obviously, yeah. cinematographers are different to like directors. Directors, yeah. Directors, I guess, would have to do uh, uh, like a lot less, but then. It's like the time you take for one project is different mm. to a cinematographer. Yeah. They could just shoot something and bounce, but a director's there from the script stage to mm. post. Mm. So like, even if it's just three projects or two projects, that could amount to like 10 to a cinematographer. Yeah. So he just said, yeah, keep making stuff. Um, so having that mentorship alongside working at BBC Comedy as like a runner was a nice balance. Mm. So I think that's kind of what transitioned me from like just doing my own self-shooting yeah. to realising not even realising the importance. I think being at uni taught me the importance of collaboration. Yeah, absolutely. But like, just myself and my career, I think, yeah, having a mentor, having mentors, mm. I have about four or five yeah. mentors that I have had along my, in my life, I have a brief or long term, mm. um, that have really helped me. I think that's kind of also what made me understand professionalism mm. for myself, money, it's just having mentors, really, yeah. to, to that okay. transition. So you feel like having people that you can go to, speak yes. to, bounce ideas off, get advice yes. from, is really something that helped you elevate yourself in terms Definitely. of... Definitely. Okay, that's really cool. And, like, like to kind of take things back a little bit, you said you studied at a Brit school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Good. so, like, how was... How was like, obviously, I've, I've heard about the Brit school. <laughs> a lot of people probably heard about the Brit school because it's it's like this X-Men for, like, yeah. X-Men <laughs> Academy for, like... Creators, yeah, I mean, that. it's mad. But um, like, how? What's like the process like in terms of getting into the British school? And what's your in like? What's the experience like? Is it is it like a school? Is it more like a, a, a creative academy? Like how? What, like if for someone that doesn't quite understand it or uh, or has never been to the British school or wants to go into the British school, what, what kind of experience is it like? Uh, creative academy is exactly right. Um, yeah. They really encourage working with the other what they called strands. Mm. So you can study there from year ten. Okay. Um, but I went there in year twelve. Mm. So they either do four years or you can do two years there. Mm. Um, to enter, like I said, I just like what I showed them as my project, my mm. final major project. Luckily, at my secondary school, they did a creative di- media diploma. Mm. Not all schools do that. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I went to the charter school. So that's, that's the, like, they only tested, it was their second year doing that diploma mm. instead of, like, choosing, like, two GCSEs, you know, that whole A-level thing. Yeah. But, um, so because of that, I started from, like, early, do you get what I mean? But even then, I was, like, I took the creative media diploma to, like, a different level because mm. they just thought it was just, like, projects, like, art projects or yeah. music projects. But a I went a whole documentary, documentary yeah. so that was on my own back. Mm. So as long as you've self-shot something, like, even if it's just asking someone... Like, I'm supposing like 500 is probably 200 quid now. Mm. It was 500 at the time. Yeah. So like, get a Saturday job, I'd say, and then shoot something with that camera that you have. Mm. It doesn't have to be like Canon. Yeah. It could be something like, not saying that your phone, but like, because a lot of people say, phones do you shoot are, your phone? Phones are mad these days the though. The thing is, like. phones are lit these days, but I don't want, I, I wanted to, I want to encourage the idea that you can like. Be authentic. Yeah, and it, also yeah. because with phones like, they say, oh yeah, you can shoot a phone, but those people that shoot shorts on phones, they have lens attachments. Oh, like, okay. So it's and not I don't want to gas people's heads. Yeah, it's not just yeah, with the okay, camera. Yeah, they get enough. lenses and then they have the crew. It's mm. still going to cost money. Yeah. So if you get into that 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 sort of habit of understanding investment mm. in your business, because at, mm. at the end of the day, it's a business. It's a business, yeah. So then you, and just shelf shoot things that you want to like, 
get you want you imagine it to be on a screen, you know mm. what I mean, on television, yeah, and see it like that and mm. treat it like that, mm. even if it doesn't come out like that. Yeah, at least you thought absolutely. about it. No, I feel like people will engage with this thing that I'm shooting, even if it's just interviews or talking heads. Yeah. So like that process, having that one cap like film, that just one self shot thing mm. is like for me was what got me into that creative academy. Yeah. And then the process, they just treat treat it by unit unit basis so like every every like month will be a unit on photography on yeah. radio or you'll be doing like it, it's like half practical like 50 percent practical mm. where you're going out shooting stuff and then 50 percent theory yeah so like they really encourage theory so a lot of people are like oh fuck that like you know what <laughs> i mean like <laughs> they're like i just want to shoot yeah, yeah, yeah. and that, that i mean that makes sense but mm. for me the balance is so important. I like I didn't know I was moderately dyslexic till like oh, wow. three years after I'd finished oh, sixth wow. form. Yeah. So like they just kept telling me I had learning difficulties. Like mm. some of the teachers had to stay with me mm. after hours, and I didn't understand why. why yeah. So it's like it was a bit a bit annoying, but even that's what I say. So I'm saying it from a perspective of someone who has moderate dyslexia that mm. like it is imp- like it is important to have theory alongside your mm. practical. Mm. Um, but equally, I've met people that have done business and like. I have met someone that studied law who's like a famous <laughs> cinematographer like not yeah. famous but like he's, he's influential thing, yeah. like he's shooting his commercials so it's not necessarily the lead that you have to have but that, that, that same cinematographer I'm talking about he was like setting up lights for big productions before yeah. being his own so like you're still going to have to be on set somehow yeah. so yeah with the Brit School yeah it was just like Try just experimenting with different creative disciplines. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that experiment with different creative disciplines, other than being a director or shoot like being a cinematographer, like that's when you'll know where your strengths lie. Yeah. You know what absolutely. I mean? Graphic design, even like mm. the diploma I did was graphic design based. Mm. I designed magazine covers. So it was very like it was too mad. I'm mm. very fortunate to have <laughs> that degree. So then like we've like I said, obviously, with the whole kind of trying to get into the film industry thing, like, do you feel like studying it in a in a institution is is um important? Do you feel like obviously you said that you were able to, like I said, go into these different strands mm. and these different things and kind of find out um find out kind of what it is that you liked best, what you enjoyed yeah. doing best, yeah. because you were taught the theory, you was taught both sides yes. and all, of, of all these things, but some people just don't want to go to you, yeah. maybe, yeah. do you know what I mean? So, um, like, do you feel like it is important? How important is it? Is it something that you could do without having to go to these mm. institutions? Yeah. Oh, gosh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, there were pros, pros and cons, in it? Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, like, I don't know how many people I've met that didn't go off to uni. Yeah. Like, so, all of all, like, people from all backgrounds as well. Yeah. Like, so you feel like if someone's, like, very serious about really getting into yeah. it, they need to go and get the yeah. education yeah. behind it. Yeah, definitely. It's yeah. not like... It's not like... Wait, it's not something you can wake up and just do. Yeah, no. I, I mean, like, I, you, it's, it's just like you have to do both. Like, all the mm. big, most of the big like stars when they say like oh this person didn't go uni Mm. most of the time when they say that person didn't go uni they didn't go uni to study study yeah they went to uni to study english Mm. or they went to uni to study maths yeah yeah or they went to uni to do you know what i mean so Mm. that's when so like like don't misconstrue what the industry say when they say oh this person they didn't go to uni (laughs) because a lot of the time they've actually just studied a different discipline yeah a or b they will get a mentor in the industry Mm. so like if you're able to do an apprenticeship I don't I don't feel like there's any set way because everyone creativity is fluid. Yeah. Absolutely. So like I don't feel like there's any set way of like how you're supposed to like study it. Mm. I just feel like find a way, show that you're like at least if you're consciously doing something, whether it's going into like a random production company, mm. working and asking them advice, getting them to advise what they think you should do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't ever just do nothing and then just keep in your little hole yeah, yeah. by yourself. Yeah. At least go to a production company and just find one. Just type production companies, mm. list of production companies. Mm. Stay there for a week, like, and then see what you feel. Is it, is it that easy, though, to, like, literally search a production company, send an email, get talking with someone? You cold called. You call, I cold yeah. called my really? first. Yeah, I cold called my first work experience. Locomotion. Um, I've done one at River Film. Mm. Um, I've done one at Rattling Stick. Mm. All of them are like multiple award-winning commercial production companies. Wow. So that was just a week 
each at each of those places yeah and the inside i was doing like like my degree like research projects asking about their disciplines mm. but like i feel like being there was just good to know just the people be yeah. around the people and stuff but yeah for me personally a lot of people might disagree mm. and i hate when people don't talk about their degree <laughs> they try to act like they just skipped they just skipped yeah, all like they just did yeah. an award-winning yeah. film no yeah. my degree was beneficial because i met the creatives i've just done a like a master tasters at the national film and television school oh, wow. just yeah. shot a directed a film with like people that have graduated with masters in film mm. and I'm not I'm not I'm not I have I haven't done it and I'm not doing it because I can't even actually afford it. Yeah. I can't afford to do a masters and but that offer was there for me to interview for it. Mm. But like just being around those people that specialise in it mm. for me was very beneficial. So I feel like yeah degree for me was very like useful to meet the creatives, mm. to practice my discipline. I was working like at Coast alongside it. Like, I was doing a retail job yeah. alongside it because I couldn't afford to not do it. So, like, but doing it was like great. More so the practical than the theory. Yeah. Theory is just homework. Isn't it? It's like <laughs> yeah, business, like, much. isn't it? It's like Being freelance, school, yeah. tax return shit. Like, yeah, yeah. that's just there to just do it and get on with your life. But mm. the practical side, where you're meeting all these people that are really like passionate, In the field, yeah. it just means that you just, when you come out, you just have them there as contacts, you know? Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely.